Greetings! Andrew Schatz, Clint Harp here at the Harp Design Co. Shop. Welcome uh, to another tutorial. We are going to jump right into it today. Okay, now which one's Facebook, which one's Instagram? Facebook? Facebook. Facebook over here, Instagram over here. Hello, Facebook world. Hello, Instagram world. Here we go. Howdy. Andrew, what are we doing today? We're doing some tonguing and some grooving. Tonguing and grooving. That's right, tongue and groove joints. Okay, for a tabletop, there's a lot of different ways to join together a tabletop. You can edge joint, mm -hmm. floating tenon, floating tenon, uh, uh, biscuit joints, Biscuits. domino joints, all of which we have used here in our shop. But my all-time favorite, and the thing that I started doing way back in the day when I first started doing this was tongue and groove joinery. My grandfather, Vernon Martin, said, go buy yourself a dado blade and learn how to make tongue and groove joints and join your tabletop together like that. And I said, yes, sir, and that's what I did. This is the beginnings or the makings of a tabletop, and voila, you can see tongue and groove joints. Which okay. you know. This, Andrew, is what? That is the tongue. That's right. That Sticks is, out like a tongue. There you go. That's the tongue side, and this is the groove side. Okay? It's my favorite side. It's grooving. You like your grooving. Yeah. You're a, it's you're only a one guy. pass on the router. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Okay, so you can see they, when done properly, they just fit together perfectly. See how that works? That creates um, a bond all the way the length of your tabletop. Okay, because you're going to glue this together. You throw a little glue on your joint, and then you put them together. Voila, nice and tight. And this is what you get right here. This one, it's not coming apart. That right there, that is a solid joint. See right here, you can see the tongue in the groove. How in the world do you do this? I mentioned the dado blade. What is a dado blade, class? A dado blade is a? A, a stackable blade. A stackable blade, so that you can cut more than just your eighth inch kerf. Does anybody know what kerf is? Kerf is the amount of, uh, I guess, the, the width of the cut that you make with a blade on your table saw or chop saw or whatever you're using to cut. So most table saw blades are an eighth of an inch thick. So your kerf, okay, or the slice that you're putting in the wood is an eighth of an inch, all right? If you wanted to make that though, if you want a wider kerf, then you do, you use what's called a dado blade. This is a dado blade. They come sometimes in boxes like this or uh, kind of like a pouch. Basically what you do is you, on your table saw, you put one blade like this. There you go. Thank you, Andrew. And your little pin. Thank you. That's, that's, there you're pinky. Very good. Then you stack on one of these are called chopper blades. All right? You might want to make sure they're going the this, right. This, yes. Here, here, here. Oh, sorry to break your pinky. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of line them up. You offset your chopper blades. Okay? You, you, get a, you always want the blades to come towards you on the table saw. That's right. Thank you. Then you cap on your other one. How's your pinky doing? This is a little heavy. And so now you can see this one has a curve of about a half of an inch or so, something like that. So now you've got a stacked blade, okay? And see coming at you like that. That is going to cut one solid boom, like that. See right there? Now we are actually going to show you on the table saw here in a second what that looks like in action. Okay? And you actually use this dado blade, use the same blade to cut the groove and uh, the tongue, and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. The other way to do it, Andrew, what's the other way to do it? We use a routers, and uh, there's different bits to make your your groove and your tongue, and we found that the the routers really make a good tight fit. So they we, do. We're fans yes. of the routers. I started out on the table saw using tongue and groove, then I moved over to the router. And uh, I think we are much happier with the router for sure. Yeah. And it's really a lot easier when you have two routers because then you can just set one set up. It, put it aside and whenever you need to do it. Boom. Boom. 
One of the keys on this though, guys, when you're tongue grooving and all that stuff, you need to have a planer, okay? Because in order to make all this stuff fit perfectly, these pieces of wood need to be the same thickness. So make sure you have a planer, learn how to use it, get comfortable with it at home. We've talked about planers before. One day we'll do a planning tutorial. I built this business on the back of a planer that I bought at a home improvement store, okay? And I used that for two or three years before we got a big industrial grade planer. I used just the little average 14 inch planer and it did great work for me. But you need to plane all your wood and make sure it's the same thickness when you're making tongue and groove joints. All right, over here. We've got, you see, that is, so this the, is the bit for, that's the bit for tongues. And um, so this is the here with the camera, and we'll show you. This is our tongue. I mean, it's the one that sticks out. All right, so he's going to show you so when you put the planer on there. Would, I mean, I'm sorry, the router. You would put it on. I'm missing it. And then you just run the router. Now, the, the thing about the tongue is then you have to flip the board. Yep. And then you can run other side and then that that will make your tongue so there you the go. key is to making sure that you can get the tongue to fit perfectly into the groove this one just makes a groove so it looks like that and you got a little bit of a gap it comes down and then you'll just go right into the piece of wood and that's um, sometimes if your groove is a little big you can make the groove or it's a little small you can just flip it again but when you use these router bits okay what happens is you get these set perfectly and so you are able to then make an absolutely perfect tongue and groove joint mm -hmm. and over and over and over again because you lock these into place they don't move and you just keep cutting your wood over and over and over again okay now we're going to move around here and we're actually going to show you what this looks like we got a couple pieces here okay that are uh all right, here we go. <clears throat> These, Andrew, will you grab my uh, glasses over there? I think they're piled up over there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a, a tongue and a groove, thank you very much, on our table saw. Now if you bring this over here, I want you to show right here, our table saw is set, okay? This is our dado blade, we have this stacked in here, all right, and set up. And of course, it's a little bit of a distance away because now we're going to run this over here, okay, and cut our uh, groove. So hang tight right there, cameras, and here we go. And voila. See? See how that works? Just cuts it right out. Now, let me show you how we do the groove. Now we're not, we have not set this up so these fit together perfectly. We haven't tested anything. That's not the point. I just want to show you how this dado blade actually works, okay? Because when I say, well, use dado blade, you just cut it out. You're like, huh? Now you're actually going to see it, okay? All right. Now, turn this on. Now, cameras, watch this way. Watch what happens, okay? There's one part right there. Now we flip it. Boom. And there is your tongue. Okay? So you got a tongue and you got a groove. All right? That is it. That's how you do it. It's my favorite joint. Is that your favorite joint? What's your favorite joint? Um, dovetail. You're a dovetail guy. Oh man, fancy. Old world craftsmanship right. over here. Yeah. I just keep it simple. Tongue groove joint. Tongue group. Thanks guys so much. Listen, leave your questions on here on the video. We are then going to go back and answer your questions and then Demi will post it on the blog with answers to the questions and, uh, and you'll be able to kind of watch this thing over and over again if you want. Uh, as you're trying to figure out how to do tongue groove joints in your shop back at home. As always, be safe guys. Do not go about this haphazardly. Take your time. Go slow. This finger right here, I took a little bit off when I was learning how to tongue and groove joints. So. Count, count them often. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't walk back home with nine yeah. or eight. All right. That's it. We're out. Thanks guys. See you. Bye.